And all Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering, it's Friday afternoon. Thank God it's Friday afternoon. Here in the Eastern time zone of the USA, it's 20 Zulu on July 30th, 2021, 4 p.m. EDT. It's time for the weekend special. This is a show where we talk about anything that is going on in the hobby. And today, uh, I picked the topic of grounding and bonding. Uh, grounding and bonding are one of the things that can really make a huge difference in the way your station works. And it's also very important from a safety aspect. So uh, there are all good reasons to pay attention to this. This is a, a very shortened version of talks that I give to radio clubs. And uh, I do those via Zoom um, and do them all over the world. And uh, we've done hundreds of these things here in the last uh, several years. And uh, one of the most requested presentations is the full grounding and bonding talk. Uh, today, I'm gonna give you a real short uh, snippet, uh, kind of a teaser of what's in that talk. And if you want to have uh, me give a presentation to your club, that's no problem. We can get that set up. You just need to send an email to Terry, and that's K-8-M-N-J, Kilo 8 Mike November Juliet at dxengineering.com, and she will get you scheduled. Um, a lot of what I talk about is based on this book from the American Radio Relay League. The ARRL published the book. It's written by Ward Silver, N0AX, and others like Jim Brown, K9YC, contributed to it as well. But it is the best book that I have ever read on the subject of grounding and bonding. It's very easy to understand. There's great photos, lots of drawings and explanations. So if you don't have a copy, grounding and bonding, it's available at DX Engineering. And uh, th this, is, this will pay dividends uh, for your station. So let's, uh, let's get into a couple of slides here so that you can, um, so I can explain some of the things that are important when we're talking about grounding and bonding. And there we go. All right. So um, we're going to talk about, uh, I, I, I said we were going to talk a little bit about AC safety grounding. That's very important. Uh, your AC panel, uh, the main panel has to have a connection to a ground rod. And uh, I know there are a lot of older homes, especially in the U.S., that may be just connected to a water pipe uh, as a ground. And that isn't always the best because uh, in recent years, uh, some plumbers have replaced parts of the plumbing system with plastic. So we want to make sure that you have your AC power uh, system grounded properly. And if you don't know if it's grounded properly, uh, there are reference materials or books. Um, and I, I always say it's best to hire a professional, uh, a licensed bonded electrician that knows wh what he or she is doing and make sure that your AC power system is to code. Um, and, you know, this is, it is real important because it stabilizes your AC power during faults and transients such as lightning. And here's how the basic system is uh, in the United States with the utility transformer and 240 volts coming in. Also a, uh, a service conductor that is grounded known as the neutral. It's grounded at the utility transformer and then notice the grounding electrode to the box, to the ground bus. And here's the neutral bus and the neutral and ground bus can only be connected in the main breaker panel. If you have any sub panels, you, may, you need to make sure that this bonding jumper is removed. This only appears in the main. And notice that this ground bus connects to the metal box. And here's uh, some examples of ground rods that are for your AC safety grounding. I like to use the exothermic uh, welds, um, right? Uh, the, known as CAD weld, that's available at DX Engineering. 
And here is the basic ground system where all of the earth connections are bonded together. So uh, from the electrical panel to the, the television set, etc. You do not want lightning to come into your house and then try to get rid of it. So ground paths need to go around your station like this. And you notice that the uh, coax is connected to the bottom of the tower. The bottom of the tower is connected to a ground rod. And then as the coax goes into the house, it's also connected to a ground rod. And then the radio equipment, et cetera, is connected to a single point ground panel. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then you have all of your station protection lightning grounds as well. Here's the proper way to do tower grounding using radials and multiple wires and uh, then uh, or multiple ground rods. This is a station single point ground panel connection. And this is here at K3LR where a uh, strap is used to go on to the ground ring that is uh, underneath the uh, operating desks where the ground rods are actually in the floor. You want this to be as short as possible. And I like to use strap, uh, heavy strap that is, uh, is still flexible, but it is uh, very low impedance and uh, great conductivity. I also use all brass hardware for the ground connections. And uh, here, <clears throat> here is some of the equipment hooked up to the single point ground panel. Uh, that, that, that is tin copper braid that's available from DX Engineering. It's one inch wide. It is for inside use only. If you use this outside, it will wick water and it will deteriorate very fast. I always use solid strap outside. But these are ground connections going to the amplifier, to the radio, to the antenna switch. Here's a single point ground panel. Notice the RF ground plane underneath the radio. The radio connects to the RF ground plane. The ground plane connects to the single point ground panel. And also all of the other items in the shack connect there as well. Here's another single point ground panel uh, with lightning protectors and also gas discharge tubes uh, from the rotor controls so that make sure that uh, that the this is clamped if it gets above a certain voltage like 82 volts another single point ground panel where everything is at the same potential inside the shack you can use uh, uh, half inch copper pipe if you want for the bonding bus then that would connect to the single point ground panel but every piece of equipment is connected to that same bonding bus we want to keep cables short and minimize the loop area, keep the cables together. Uh, here's an, uh, another example of an RF ground plane underneath the radio. And notice that uh, this helps to equalize the voltage amongst all the components in the station. And you bond this to the station ground system. Here's a uh, single point ground panel with all the connections from the RF bonding bus the AC power panel. Notice the ground rods are all connected together so that there's not, no chance for differing voltages during a lightning event. So that is a, that is a very short uh, piece on, the, uh, on what I do and what many, many thousands of hams do, uh, you know, bonding things correctly. But you need to make sure... Um, all those ideas and the right way to do things are in this grounding and bonding book. And of course, uh, as I mentioned at the start of today, um, I give a much more expanded talk to clubs and uh, I'm available to speak to your club. Let's see who we have on today in the chat room. We've got uh, Kilo Golf 5 Uniform Mike India, Kilo Papa 4 Lima Radio from Puerto Rico. And... Um, Ilian says the book is excellent, just finished, and has the references to the Motorola guidelines to complete the work. Yes, the, the Motorola uh, R56 is online. It's almost 600 pages long, but it's a great read. It, uh, it is super. And Joe says, uh, K0NEB, Ward did a great job on the book. I redid my grounds accordingly. 
and KP4 Radio Yankee uh, is on as well today. And Dino says, Ward is a great all-around author who has uh, a great impact across the hobby. Yes, he does. And uh, Zulu 30 Alpha is on. And 7X-Ray 2 Radio Fox is on as well today. Whiskey Juliet 3 United. And uh, Robert the Traveler, WD8NVN, says that ARL grounding and bonding book is priceless for sure. And uh, let's see, we have our, our friend uh, Mike, KE3JP, is on. And uh, who else is on here? We have uh, uh, Dino says, whole house light, light, lightning protection system is pricey but definitely worthwhile considering. And it becomes even more important when you have a tower. When you have antennas that are sticking up in the air above your house, it's really important because that's predominantly what's going to get hit. And uh, you do want to do everything you can to protect your equipment, uh, to protect your house, protect your power system. WB4 Hotel Zulu Alpha is on. Whiskey India 9 Echo Mike Tango is on. And uh, John Stevens says, love the book. And uh, Dennis from Warren, Ohio, W-A-T-W-O. The Warren Amateur Radio Association was the first club I ever joined when I was a kid. And uh, so real soft spot my heart. And I was uh, chief engineer at uh, the AM station there, W-R-R-O. Uh, also, Whiskey Alpha 4 Mike Oscar Mike uh, is on from Mitchell, Kentucky. And uh, we have Brandel, Kilo Delta 9 Sierra Hotel Alpha, A92 Alpha Alpha is on. And uh, Dave, Whiskey X-Ray 3 Echo, and he's uh, vacationing at Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Nice to have you along today, Dave. And Papa Yankee 4 Mike Alpha Bravo from Brazil. And uh, let's see, we've got Kilo Golf 5 Juliet Papa Uniform. Hello, Tim. Hope all is well with you and yours, and all is well. And uh, we've got Kilo Charlie 3 Bravo Fox Victor. Mike is on. Another Mike, Kilo India 8 Radio. And Mike is a member of the DX Engineering sales and technical team. And so when, when you call into DX Engineering, you might get to speak to Kilo India 8 Radio, another one of our great uh, sales associates here at DX Engineering. And uh, we have... Kilo Zero, November, Oscar, Charlie. And uh, we'll soon uh, get to this. Good timing. Always make uh, time to ground and bond correctly. From uh, Ireland, it's Echo India 3, e India Echo Bravo. And uh, from Greece, it's Sugar Victor 8, Golf, Golf, India. And uh, Dennis says, I listen to WRRO. I've been a WARA, uh, Warren Amateur Radio Association member, for 20 plus years. Well, I haven't been to a, a Warren meeting probably in 40 years, but um, a great club, a great organization, and they certainly uh, helped me get started in what is the best hobby in the world. And Kilo Echo 9 Bravo Victor is on as well. So the Missouri QSO party is going on this weekend. Of course, August 1st is Sunday. So all of those antenna projects that you've been thinking about it's time to get started on them or get them finished because before you know it, Labor Day will be here and it'll be September and it'll start getting cold. And uh, so now while it's warm, uh, go get those antenna projects done. And Whiskey Juliet 3 United said, I raised my tower and antennas this morning and checked all of the grounds. You do need to check them because things do happen and they can break or uh, maybe you used uh, some braid that you shouldn't have outside. So make sure that you inspect that, uh, get the book, look at the online resources. K9YC has a great website where he talks a lot about grounding and bonding. He's a super guy, WHJI, and also the ARL has tons of stuff on their website. So you don't even have to buy the book and you can get most of the information, but the book is really concise and clear about everything and uh let's see daniel w uh whiskey india nine echo mike tango if an eight foot ground rod can be almost pushed in by hand in sandy soil 
what do you recommend to do um, two, eight feet apart or saw something about crimping one onto another or something else? Um, you should, uh, from the standpoint of an AC power ground, you need to consult with an electrician, a licensed and bonded electrician, because they will know how to handle that sandy soil. From a station ground perspective, uh, running radials may be a, a better solution for you. Radials on the ground, uh, out from that ground rod, uh, will probably help you a great deal from a station grounding perspective. But make sure you check with the electrician if this is for the power ground. And uh, Dennis says, uh, by chance, did you know my dad, Dick Alexander? He was licensed as W8TWO in 1954. He's now a silent key. I don't think so, uh, Dennis. That name doesn't sound familiar. And uh, Greg, K2GRG, says, thanks for doing this, Tim. Well, hey, I had to learn this stuff from a book or from other hams. I've been asking questions for almost 50 years now, and every day I learn something. So um, hopefully I, I can help uh, some of you have more fun, be safe, and get more out of your amateur radio station. That's all for this Friday's weekend special. Uh, thanks to all the viewers and all the customers of DX Engineering for everything you do. And uh, I hope to work you on the air. So until next Tuesday, we have a very special edition of Tuesdays with Tim and Jeff. Don't miss it live. It's 1.15 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time next Tuesday. It's going to be a real special show. Uh, Shannon says, you mentioned using solid core grounding strap for outside grounding. Does DX Engineering have this? Well, of course we do. Just uh, put ground strap in the search box. It'll take you right to it. Until next time, on Tuesday, 73 from DX Engineering.